Today, we'll be showing you the tricks to bring your icebox to a new level, as well as the agents you'll need to pick to go with it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting with the side players tend to struggle with the most, there are a few steps to take to put up a strong defensive half. Varying your setups and trying to predict your opponents is important to defending on Icebox because it's a large map with lots of possibilities for the attackers. And that means realistically, no team of five can have a strong setup in all areas of the map. That means you need to coordinate which site you want to hold and which bomb site you want to play more passively with the intention of retaking. Having a clear plan with your teammates on site as to whether or not you'd like to actively hold it or to play for the retake of the site. For example, typically B is easy to retake, so playing three players towards A with two passive players watching over mid and B is a common approach that works well. Making sure that you have support if you are holding sight, because if you're fighting for your life, but your teammate is sitting in screens, you're going to have a very hard time taking on the attackers alone. Whilst it's also best to have an understanding between the players on opposite sides of the map, communication isn't always great and ranked, but you can make this style of play work to some degree without communication, just by positioning yourself based on how your team is set up. Particularly as a B player, you can opt for the more passive positions where you're likely to stay alive with the intention of being there to help in the retake of a site. Oh, and if you like these kinds of theoretical breakdowns of maps, we urge you to also check out our recent course with Ye, where he among many important topics talks about Valorant map theory and what you can do to learn, study, and understand any map in the pool. Through our monthly $8 subscription, you can not only get access to that, but also to all of our other courses, our pro boot camps, and we'll even toss in a discount on coaching. So check it out if you're interested. Now let's talk about the agents that work with this great approach and their key abilities that will help you win rounds. First of all, Viper. Very strong as both a defender who can stall oncoming attackers, but also if they can stay alive long enough, the wall is an invaluable tool to provide cover in a retake. Setting up a simple wall like this one on A can easily be used for both purposes, for the initial defense and for the retake. In fact, even if you are playing the B site with Viper, you'll still be able to provide this wall for your teammates on A and make it to your site in time to set up a useful orb that just like the wall can be very effective in many situations. Sage is undeniably the best retake agent, but make sure you keep hold of your wall as often as possible. No more walling tube, it's not 2021. Sage's wall can be easily placed to block off default spike plants on both sites, giving your team cover to defuse and even sometimes blocking abilities such as snake bites, mollies, and nano swarms raining in. Harbor is a close second with Cole providing a good alternative to the wall. In combination with Sage, Gecko is also fantastic in these situations. If you can use Wingman to defuse, that means in every retake you suddenly have one extra player with their gun out, which can often give you the numbers advantage and change the round. Another important part to a retake approach to defense is awareness of your flank. Enemies sneaking up through mid as you start your retake can be very, very dangerous, sometimes winning rounds on their own. So how do you prevent these plays? Sentinels like Killjoy, Cypher, and Chamber can provide earlier info and even deter those lurkers altogether. If you opt not to pick one of these agents, then make sure somebody is watching your back. Now for the secret to winning Icebox Attack, it's all about fakes. Simply put, this is making it look like you're about to push one site, while in fact lining up to take the other site as the opponents rotate. There's sometimes confusion as to exactly how to fake, so let's clear that up first. Fakes should never consist of all five members of the team going towards B and then sprinting all the way back to A together. The problem here is that you give up all that map control and information, and you risk running into a defender pushed up into a surprise position. You should always have at least one player holding map control elsewhere, either in mid or towards the site you intend to plant at. It's best generally to have two that allows those players to safely keep hold of the spike and watch over both mid and A pushes. Oh, and of course, the opposite is true too. If you were to fake A, you want somebody waiting outside B. Now let's get into the details on how to make those fake rounds successful. It actually starts right from round one, your pistol round. If you push the B side in the first round and you at least get the spike planted, you've already started to condition your opponents. Think about the utility that you used in the first round, how it looked and sounded from the defender's perspective. If you can now replicate those abilities and footsteps with just three players, you're all set up for a very good fake round later in the game. Once you have run some good fakes, there is the added bonus that if you vary your round plans and actually make fast plays, the defenders could now be more cautious to rotate as they will be anticipating your fakes. They're then less likely to help their teammates out, giving you the advantage 5v2 on site. The best way to illustrate this is with an example. We're in round one, Viper throws a poison orb in mid and a wall that cuts through B site just behind default. Silva sends a recon bolt above long, KO throws a knife that lands and covers yellow, Jet runs up and gives cover to Sage who walls and plants the spike. You win the round and do the same again for your next anti-eco round next. Whether you win or lose round two, you're now ready to run the fake. You use the exact same set of utility, Viper Orb and Wall, Sova's Recon Bolt, and KO's Knife too. All three players run up B long, your opponents see all the abilities and hear all the steps, and quickly the whole team rotates to defend B in anticipation of another B site plant. This time you're one step ahead though. Jet and Sage wait outside A, and start to slowly walk up to the undefended A site. 
The others quickly rotate through spawn using the poison orb for cover, and Sage plans to spike open for all of A main. At this point, you may as well be 3-0 up with a strong economy and facing an eco round next. Secure the anti-eco round and you're ready to set the trap again. This time you head straight to A. Remember the utility you used and you can replicate it for a new fake. It is important to understand that there are levels to faking, and the rank at which you play will determine how convincing you need to make your fake play. Where at ranks below diamond, you might find that the opponents are very eager to rotate, and abilities alone can draw them out of position. Above diamond, you'll likely need to get close enough for your footsteps to be heard from sight. At the top level, you need to go another step closer, such as getting a player across to yellow on B. This creates real pressure on the defenders, which will make them call for help and guarantee those rotations to happen. Icebox is an unusual map in the sense that map control isn't your typical goal in ranked. Controlling mid is not as valuable as it is on other maps, and so it's more often a target for your late lurk play. Silently waiting out rotations in this corner or under two. One of your more passive agents such as Viper or Killjoy are best for the job. As you're not taking mid as a team, you're typically just switching between executing and faking. There is some flexibility in the agents you can choose for Icebox. It's just about finding a balance between a good attack and defense composition. As we mentioned earlier, agents like Viper, Sage, Killjoy, and Gecko work great on the defense side. Once again, Viper is your best controller option for attack, although a good harbor player can do a similar job. The reason to choose one of these controllers is the fact that you can get multiple uses out of their walls, which ties in nicely with fake rounds, but also the fact that their walls simply provide more reliable cover at the B site than any combination of smokes ever could. Snake Bites and the Poison Orb in mid tips things in favor for Viper, providing cover for rotations and a strong afterplan. The big plus to Harbor, however, is that the Cove can replace Sage's wall, providing safe cover for both planters and diffusers. Raze, Jet, and Reyna can all be useful on the map. However, none of them are essential. In fact, you'll often see pro teams playing without a duelist at all. It's best to have two initiators, especially if you decide to drop a duelist. KO and Sova have easy to use abilities that don't require complex lineups, that both support side takes and work great in a fake. Fade can work, but you need to know your haunt lineups to be a good replacement for Sova. Sky can replace KO, but you will lose the fake potential from the knife. Gecko is a great pick, but only in combination with one of Sage or Harbor. So how might an ideal Icebox composition look? Here are some for you to try. Viper, KO, Sova, Sage, Killjoy. This composition has a rock solid defense, great retakes, and loads of fake potential for the attack side. Harbor, KO, Sova, Gecko, and Reyna. This comp has easy spike plants and lots of firepower for sight pushes, but it's also weaker on defense. And it works best with the retake approach. Send Reyna in to sell your fakes and keep valuable afterplant agents alive. Ever heard of the phrase, fake it till you make it? Now you'll be faking your way to a great icebox win rate. Made some great fake plays? Let us know in the comment section down below. For now, thanks so much for watching and we will see you all in the next one.